video explain how particle size distribution in clay soil can be determined uh, using image J uh, uh, software. The, fir uh, the first thing that we need to do is to uh, load uh, the image J in onto our laptop or computers and then we open the image that uh, was captured, which is the image of the clay soil that was captured as you can see on your screen there. So this image is, uh, you can see it has particle sizes of different uh, dimensions and um, we need to determine the distributions, the, the particle size distributions uh, in these uh, images. It is important to note that uh, for these particles, uh, for you to be able to use this technique, you need to have a representative sample. In my next video, I'll explain how images can be captured uh, from different uh, soil. So what we need to do here, first of all, is to scale uh, our image. And this can be done uh, uh, by using uh, the known dimensions that was captured together with, uh, uh, with the particles. And then we come to the image J, we go to uh, set scale. As we can see there, the unknown distance there is five millimeter and our units of measurement is millimeter. And as you can see there, our scale is about 67 pixels uh, per millimeter. So once we have we have set the scale of our image, uh, then we need to select our area of interest in on the image. So we can select that area there, and then we can crop it. So we can determine particle size distribution in these uh, regions of interest here. It is important to save uh, this file as we are going to use it later. So we can save it as uh, cropped. And the other thing that we now need to do is to convert this image into an 8-bit image. Uh, because here we, the color is not uh, of importance when you're determining or analyzing the particle sizes. Once we have uh, converted into an 8-bit image, then we can convert now the image into a binary image through thresholding process. So you go to the image, adjust, you select threshold. And it is important at this point also uh, to open up the image that you saved. You go back there, you open the cropped image that we saved, and then you be able to compare the two. As you do the, uh, the thresholding, uh, be able to compare uh, the, two, uh, the two images. This uh, will ensure that you, you are able to capture all the particles. You are able to capture all the particles that are there uh, within uh, your image. So it's important for you to uh, to be able to uh, to do that, uh, so that uh, you can be able to see the image uh, that you are producing. So we can have the two. Uh, uh, two images side by side. So we start the thresholding. Uh, the, uh, the lower um, limit, we set it to zero, and then we start reducing uh, the gray values until you're able to identify most of the particles that are there uh, within your image. It is important at this point uh, to keep an eye on the original image and you see uh, whether you can be able to identify most of the uh, most of the particles, particularly the very uh, small, uh, the very the very small uh, particles, you can keep on reducing the gray values until you are able to see uh, most of those particles. Maybe we stop at 50. For this case, our thresholding varies 0 and 50, so we can apply that. Once you apply that, you'll be able to uh, to see all the particles that have been identified uh, from the original uh, image there. Now, the thing we may also need to do here is to ensure that these particles, most of these particles, they are separated. Yeah, you can see like in this region here, most of those particles are together. So we need to separate these particles because during the thresholding process, some of those particles, uh, they were merged uh, together. So we go uh, through a process in our image J, we go through binary and then we do a water shedding process. So this process is able to separate different particles by creating 
a line between uh, those particles. Once we have been able to do that, we can also, within each image, we can also be able to fill the holes. Yeah, so you fill all the spaces that are there within each uh, particle that have been identified. Now that we have been able to uh, uh, identify the particles and we have been able to fill the holes and also to separate them, the next thing that we need to do is to uh, uh, analyze those particles. So for this case, first uh, things that we need to do is to set our measurements. This give an indication of the information that we require from the software. For this case, we need the area of the particles and also the shape descriptors, how something that define their shape, whether they are circular or not, and also uh, a measurement or parameter that give the maximum di distance in x and y uh, directions. So this we have already selected, but you can also select many other depending on the analysis that you're doing. Uh, after we have done that, then we need to analyze the particle. See here, we have an opportunity to set uh, uh, the sizes, the limits of our particle sizes. We know that during this process of uh, uh, thresholding, some particle may be merged together, may be uh, merged together, and therefore it is important to avoid distortion of our data uh, to set the upper limit. For our case here, our clay soil was sieved through a 2.5 millimeter wire mesh and therefore we know uh, the maximum area assuming that those particles were circular in nature the maximum area of those particles could be been about five millimeters square so we can set that five millimeters square to be our upper limit a lower limit can be very very small so we can set from zero uh, going upwards and also uh, we know that uh, most of our particle particles they are not uh, circular in nature but also because of uh, margin of the particle during the threshold process is also important to set a, a limit for this case uh, about 40 percent to ensure that any particle that is less than 40 percent circular is eliminated or is not uh, considered during the uh, computations of the particle analysis. And then we can uh, decide to overlay our image, the image we have with what the software will be able to detect, and we can display our results and exclude the edges. Those are particles along the edges, and we can okay on that. So once we do, we, we do that, you can see that the software is able now to identify most of the particles within our, our image. So we can see we have those different particles, even the small ones and the big ones, they're there. And all these particles, the information that the particles have is given in this data here. So these are the number of particles, which are about 7,000 there. This is the area of the particles. And also these are the parameters, um, maximum distance in x direction, maximum distance in y directions, and also the aspect ratio, the, that is the ratio between uh, the, the maximum in the maximum dimensions uh, in the two directions, that is x and y. And then using this information, we can now be able to determine our particle uh, size distributions. So we can save this as uh, play, uh, particle size data we can save that and we can go to now our excel and be able to um, uh, to analyze that data so let's open this uh, data uh, uh, we can open the data using microsoft excel uh, so this is the data you can see we have the areas and all the other parameters that were captured by image j software and since we want to analyze the particle sizes and we, we don't have any parameter that give an indication of the particle sizes, we can use area to determine the diameter of our particles, assuming those particles, they are uh, spherical or they are circular in nature. So we can add another column here called diameter and we can compute the diameter of the particles based on the areas that were given. So this is how uh, we can do that. We can do the square root, and then the square root of the area. We divide by 22 over 7. 
<laughs> and that will give us the diameter of particle one there. And we can follow all that so all through. After that, now we can get descriptive statistics for this data. So you go to the data there, data analysis. Yeah, you get the descriptive statistics and we get this to be the range of the data that we want to analyze here. And then um, uh, we can look at the, uh, the output. So we can, our data is required here. And then we, what we just need is summary of the statistics. So we get um, a summary, a descriptive statistics for this data. And our data here is in terms of uh, the diameters of our particles. So this is the data. So we can see we have the mean diameter standard errors of the diameters and so on and so on. So the important information that is in the data that is important for our calculations uh, is that information there. So we have the range. We show the difference between the maximum and the minimum uh, diameters within the range of the data uh, that, that we have. So we use this information. Uh, uh, we can be able to uh, uh, compute the range. We know the range is given uh, by that. And then we want what we want to do is to uh, uh, is to determine uh, the the particle size distribution, and uh, we are going to do this using histogram and also the cumulative frequencies. So the big range there is normally given by the range. Yeah, you divide by the number of beans that you have there. Uh, normally, you can use five beans there. To get some information so it's also important to reduce these values uh, to two decimal uh, places so you can use, even use six we see so we can get a value like that so we can have our beans here and also the uh, the range or the limits what you can call them uh, the, 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 the limits so we have six beans so we have one, two, three, and we have six beans there. And we can have the limits for the first bean given by the by the minimum diameter, and the second uh, bean given by the minimum diameter. You add the the bean not bin range, uh, bin size. So this is not the bin range, uh, this is the, the bin size. So uh, for this case, uh, we need to ensure that um, we can uh, make this a reference cell. Um, there's a reference cell there. And then we can pull this, uh, we can pull this down like that. So we have our beans and their limits, and we can use this information um, uh, to establish the, the histogram. So we come to the data, uh, data analysis, uh, histogram, yeah. and then your input data is this one, uh, is, the, is the data, uh, our bean range, um, yeah, this is our main range and our output this is uh, where we need our output data uh, maybe here and what we want is cumulative percentages and also the main charts so that is our data uh, uh, in terms of the the, the bean the groupings and also the frequency and cumulative frequencies being given by that information there. So we can expand this and we see how our data look like. So we can see this is our data. So uh, we can from the data we can see about 94% of the particles they are less than 0 0.4 uh, millimeter. And this is the cumulative uh, frequencies.
So we can be able to rename this histogram into particle size distribution. And these are gray, gray, gray particle size distributions. And this one we can put in terms of uh, particle diameter in terms of millimeter. And with that, um, we come to the end of our, of our video. And this is how we can be able to use image J uh, to determine the particle size distributions of clay soil. Thank you.